Okay, we'll go ahead and get started now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our SHS training for beginners in February. Um, if you are a beginner, this is the place you need to be. If you are more advanced, you might want to come to our training on February 17th, which will be for the more intermediate and advanced questions. If you have questions that are advanced, you don't have to wait till the 17th. You can write to Rupali or myself, and let me throw that slide up real quickly so you have our emails. Um, okay, so now you can probably see the training slide and it's got Rupali and my email there. So you can write to us if you do have an advanced question, but today's questions uh, we're gonna save for the beginners. All right, and so start typing your questions. I have Rupali Gupta here helping me out today, my colleague and coworker, and um, she will be fielding the questions. Rupali, are there any questions to start off or can we just jump into what I was gonna do to get us started? I think we can jump in, Lucy. There okay. aren't any questions at the moment. All right, so I have a little paper case that I came across and what I'm going to do is just walk step-by-step step through this paper case so that you can see how to easily, um, you know, put a case down in SHS, get it repertorized, get it on a clipboard, uh, save it, analyze the remedies on the clipboard. We're just gonna go step-by-step. Step. And at any point, if you have a question, please do type it and we'll get those answered. All right, let's get started. This is a little paper case of a, a girl who has a dry and painful cough, worse at night, especially lying down. It's also worse when she lies down during the day, like when she's <clears throat> watching TV or reading. Um, she's not normally clingy, but during this illness, she wants her mother beside her quite a bit. Her thirst is diminished. Her appetite is non-existent. Um, neither hot nor chilly, particularly. The doctor, I guess, who auscultated her lungs um, said that she has a touch of pneumonia. And um, so I guess he has heard some rails, but she has had no x-ray. So how would we start this case? Well, I will come and start in repertory module Repertory module is located under the closed book icon here on the left side of the icons palette. You can see it's highlighted in aqua. Now, uh, I'm going to use the reliable repertory today, which is our repertory with SHS. To open up the reliable to get to the chapters, I simply click on this plus sign. And now I can see all the chapters of the reliable on the left side. And I can also see all the chapters of the reliable here with the picture icons on the right side and you can choose. You can decide if you wanna choose your chapters from the picture icons or the left-sided um, words. And so I kind of, my preference is to use the words on the left side, but you know, if you wanna hunt over here and find cough, you can certainly do that. I'm gonna go ahead and click cough on the left, open up that window. And now you can see I'm looking at the cough chapter. And I'm going to go and find the, the rubrics related to the pain and the dryness. So on my keyboard, not in a type to search window, but on my keyboard, I'm going to type PAI and I'm going to get down to pain. And you can see here that there are two rubrics that could apply. One has a zero count, uh, which means that there, you would not be able to put a zero count rubric into your clipboard, you would have to go into the sub rubrics of this, uh, this rubric here. You know it has sub rubrics because there's a plus sign next to it. To get into the sub rubrics, I would simply hit the right directional arrow on my keyboard and I don't see anything there I want. So I'm gonna go backwards one step by hitting the left directional arrow. Uh, now I'm gonna go to painful, okay? And I see that there's sub rubrics there as well. Let me go check those out by hitting the right directional arrow. And yeah, I'm not wanting any of those really. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take cough painful 
to my clipboard simply by hitting the return or enter key on my keyboard. And you can see that that automatically opens up this clipboard and you can see that there's one rubric on it. That is the one that's on it. All right, so, but there's also the dry aspect. So now I want to um, type on my keyboard, D-R-Y, and I wanna go look at the cough dry rubrics. And this is a fairly large rubric. It has sub rubrics. So I do want to go into those. Um, I'm gonna hit, and you could also check out dryness, but let's check out dry first. I'm going to hit the right directional arrow and that pops dry up here to the breadcrumb string. And now I'm looking at all the sub rubrics under dry. And what I'm curious about is to see if dry and painful can come together. So now I'm gonna type P-A-I on my keyboard, pain, painful. Now this, um, the dry and the painful put together, I think could be a very useful rubric. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that to my clipboard. All right, and you know, you could explore some more rubrics here. You could, um, you could go look into the sub rubrics of painful. Okay, we don't want that, you know, but there's, there's a lot of exploration here, um, several rubrics to choose from. And you just kind of look, you, find, you hone in on where you need to be and then you look around sub rubrics or maybe the, the pain above that. We could go into that, yeah. So it's an exploration, right? So I think I've got enough for that symptom in my clipboard. Now we're gonna move on to the, um, the coughing is worse at night. Now I'm in dry. Remember, you can always look up at your breadcrumb string and you see that you're in dry. I'm gonna go back to the main cough by clicking on cough up there in the breadcrumb string. It takes me back to where I'm out of dry. And I'm going to put in, well, actually I don't even have to put it in because I see it night right here. You know that each chapter is organized in a certain way and the time specifications are always gonna be at the top. So you know that night is gonna be at the top there. So there it is. And let's go into those sub rubrics and see what we have. And so if your patient has given you specific times, this is a good place to pick those up. Uh, in this particular case, there are no specific times given. But what's interesting is that rubric that's up at the top there that's highlighted and day, night and day when lying down, that was specific to her case, you know, because uh, she coughs worse at night, she coughs worse lying down during the day as well. So I'm going to go ahead and it's one, um, it's only one remedy in there, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the clipboard because it fits. But I'm also going to go back one step with my left arrow and I'm going to pick up the, the whole night rubric. So I've taken that to my clipboard with the uh, hitting the return and enter key. All right, um, so we covered that. Symptom. Let's let's talk, let's go look for clingy. Um, that mental symptom that she has. To get back to the photo icons, I could just simply come up here and click on Reliable Repertory. Boom! That takes me back to the photo icons, um, and then I can click on Mind here. Let's do that. I could also have scrolled up here and clicked on it over here on the left side. All right. So now I'm in the Mind chapter, and I'm going to type CLI, look for clingy. There it is, clinging. And maybe take that. Um, you know, she's not really clinging. Again, this is a paper case, it's limited information. Um, clinging might be a little strong here. She just kind of wants her mother to sit with her. And so maybe the, the company rubric would be a better one. You could take clinging, but I'm, I'm not going to in this instance. I'm gonna just scroll down a little bit and look for that one about um, company. Oh, there it is right there. And you see, it's one of those rubrics, again, that has zero remedies in it. And so if I try to take that to the clipboard, it won't go in because there are no remedies. You have to go into the sub rubrics. And so I'm going to hit the right directional arrow. And now you can see company has popped up here to the breadcrumb string. And we have, it's the uh, desire for is the one that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that to the clipboard. And you can go uh, look in that rubric, go look at the sub rubrics by hitting the right directional arrow. And you do have some more choices here. 
you could scroll and uh, see if like during an ailment, you know, is listed here. Um, but I'm just going to stick with the main one. Again, not I don't have a lot of details, just the, the real bare bones on this paper case. All right, so next we're going to go talk about the thirst. We're going to find that rubric. And I'm going to come over here to the stomach chapter. Just typed on it from the left side and it popped up here on the right side. And on my keyboard, I'm going to type T-H-I and we've got thirst and we've got thirst less. Now she's not exactly thirst less. Her thirst is diminished. So I'm, I'm just gonna look at this thirst here and see if I can find um, reduced or diminished D-I-M. Um, don't see it there, RAD, you know. And so if you're not finding, if you're not quite finding what you want, that's when it's a good time to pop over to global search. And so you can, you know, find your rubric. We could have been finding these rubrics in global search all along, but I was demonstrating how to navigate repertory module. And now that I'm not quite finding the rubric I want in repertory module, I'm gonna come up here to global search. And I'm going to put in thirst diminished slash reduced. Now, what that slash, that's a forward slash on my keyboard. That's a little proximity which, which you can always find over here, add proximity, and you can choose or. What that does is it allows you to uh, select multiple similar words because, you know, um, our repertories uh, don't always use the language that we have. And so you have to kind of think in, in repertory language and come up with several, you know, several varieties of a word perhaps. So to activate this search, I'm just going, I could click on this icon over here at the global, to the right of the global search window, or I can hit return on my keyboard. And now you can see that I've popped into global search over here on the icons palette. And uh, every book here in global search result, it has a result for this uh, terminology here that I put up here in global search window. And let's take a look at it. I like what I see with this rubric here. The appetite's diminished, impaired with poor thirst. That does cover the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that to the clipboard. Uh, while I'm in global search, you know, you can also look around. Uh, let's see what the complete has to say about this. And interestingly, this rubric does not apply. Diminished appetite with thirst, that isn't what we want. So it's good that you have some choices over here on the left, because if you're not finding the rubric you want in one book, you can pop around and see, you know, if you can find it in a different book. Every one of the books on the left has a result of some sort from your search but I really liked this one. So I'm gonna take that one. And now I'm just gonna pop right back over to repertory module, again, coming over here and clicking on the closed book icon. And I wanna go back to the stomach chapter and I wanna just look at appetite as well, cause you know how we honed in on thirst. I'm gonna go look at appetite. And again, I could have done this through the um, global search window, but we're back in repertory module. Lots of ways to find rubrics in SHS. Uh, appetite has zero remedies in it, so I'm going to look at the subrubrics by hitting the right directional arrow. Another way to look at subrubrics, by the way, is to double click that rubric. So let me go back and I'll show you that. So um, here we are on appetite, and if I were to double click appetite, that also takes me into uh, subrubrics. I prefer the arrows, but whatever you choose, whatever you like. Um, so here we are, and um, you know you can. Here's diminished. So you you know you could take this as well. All right, and so let's think about that pneumonia, that touch of pneumonia um, clue that we have. So I'm assuming that the physician heard some rails or rattling. Um, you could certainly go into the respiration chapter, respiration, and 
and you could type R-A-L. Let's just see if rails, I don't see rails, but I see rattling. So that would be a good, um, you know, the, the homeopathic repertory language for rails, rattling. So I might wanna take that to the clipboard. All right, does anyone have any questions so far? Um, hi, Lucy. Yes, we have some questions. Okay. Um, a couple of them relate to actually functionalities in the clipboard. So once you get to oh, the clipboard, yeah. well, and now the other one relates okay. to patient management. Yes, we're um, going to get both of those areas. I know. So I'm kind of holding off on those. Okay. And then there's one question um, from Christine who's saying that she's clicking below uh, sometimes to type the first three letters to bring up the rubric, but it doesn't consistently work. So if you can show her where to where to click in before you type the three letters. You don't have to click in anywhere, Christine. Uh, in, in the old program, you had to have your mouse situated on the gray bar at the bottom of the window. You don't have to have your mouse, in fact, you shouldn't have your mouse clicked in anywhere. Uh, don't, don't, don't click in the type to search windows. Yeah, don't click in anywhere. Um, so let's go into rattling's subrubrics and, you know, uh, let's just try to pick up. I'll just grab another, um, I'll grab, I'll grab pneumonia, what the heck. But you see, I've chosen pneumonia and I'm not positioning my mouse anywhere. I am just going straight from selecting the rubric to hitting return. Can I just um, um, pop in, Lucy, mm -hmm. one second? Yes. So um, Heather also has a similar question that sometimes when she types from the keyboard, um, the first three letters of a rubric, it you know it doesn't always register. And I just want to tell Heather and Christine and everyone else who's attending, you don't have to click anywhere, but you have to make sure that your chapter window, the repertory chapter that you're in, is active. Mm -hmm. So if you can see Lucy's uh, screen, the reliable repertory respiration chapter window, if you see the top bar, that's actually darker than the repertory window behind it, which is kind of grayed out. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that in the repertory, sometimes I have multiple chapters open, you have to make sure that the rubric that you're searching in, that window, that chapter is the active window. And the way you'll know that is that the blue bar at the top will be darker than all the other bars uh, on all the other windows you have open. Because um, you could have respiration and mind open, but mind might be the active window at the moment, but you could be typing to look for a respiration rubric and, and that won't work. So make sure the window is active. Uh, mm -hmm. whichever chapter you're working in. Yes, and that applies to the left and the right side. Um, and I'll show you that when we get to the clipboard more. So hopefully that answered all those questions about this part and I can move on to the clipboard now. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna open up the clipboard. We're ready to take a look at it. Here it is. And you can see your remedy choices that have come to the top. We got, um, you know, so this is where you want to now uh, look at your choices and start looking up the remedies in the Materia Medica in your reference library so that you can make the best choice of remedy for your, for your client. Um, and so let's say, Fos let's say we want to look at these two top ones first. So what you can do to pop straight over to the reference library is position your mouse on the name phosphorus up here above the graph and right click. Now on a Mac, it, a right click is a control. Hold on the control key as you click. And this gives you this menu option. Uh, once you have had the menus, uh, the menu options showing, you don't right click again, it's a regular click to get yourself to the reference library or any of these other choices here, but let's go to reference library. I clicked on that choice and, and you can see that phosphorus has come up in Allen's. Why does it come up in Allen's first? Because under the remedy phosphorus, Allen's is the first um, book in the list of all your books that has information about phosphorus. Now, maybe you don't want Alice. 
maybe you'd rather see a different book. Uh, and this is where uh, on my keyboard, I'm gonna go ahead and click into this left side. Just go ahead and click into that right there where I am at Allen's. And I'm on my keyboard now going to type H-E-R. I wanna go find hearings guiding symptoms. And so that popped me down the list and I'm gonna choose this one instead. And now I'm looking at hearings guiding symptoms about phosphorus. And if you remember, now I could go back to the clipboard and I could pick up Antimonium Tartaricum the very same way, but now that I'm here in reference library, you see I'm over here in reference library, the open book icon. Now that I'm here, I'm in remedies, I can just go ahead and in here type A-N-T-T -T and find that remedy. And I'm gonna open it, I'm not gonna click it. If I just click this name, it's gonna replace my phosphorus tab with hearings. What I want to do is I want to find hearings guiding symptoms for this remedy. I'm gonna open up the book by clicking on the plus sign. I'm going to move my, you see how the name of the remedy is highlighted? I'm gonna move the highlighting down into the books. And now on my keyboard. I'm how did you do that, Lucy? Just... Oh, using the down arrow, using the down arrow on my keyboard, I, I went from the remedy name to the first book name. And now I'm going to type H-E-R, find hearings guiding symptoms. I'm not gonna click it, it has to be a right click if I want the second tab. Let's, just, I'll show you how that works. Control click on hearings guiding symptoms, open that in a new window. You have to look for that message open in a new window to open a second or third or fourth tab, okay? So now I've got, um, the Herring's Guiding Symptoms for Antimonium Tartaricum coming up here. And maybe I wanna put those side by side so that I can, uh, I could go back and forth between the two. I could do that by clicking on the tabs at the top or I can put them side by side. Now, Antimonium is the one that's forefront. I wanna put Phosphorus to the forefront as well. So I'm gonna choose that one to come to the front, hit okay. And now I am, <clears throat> Now I'm going to be looking at them side by side. And then, of course, you can, um, you know, scroll. Now, once you start scrolling, let's say you scroll, you're comparing the mind chapters, uh, the mind sections in both of these remedies. And you're like, oh, wait a minute, which side is which? If you hover your mouse on the tab at the top, your status bar at the bottom will show you which remedy you're in. So if you ever get confused about that, you can you know, always hover to get the status bar to tell you where you are. Um, and so you know, that, that is how you take your remedy choices from the graph and go and research them in the reference library. To undo the side-by-side, -side, you just come over here and you untick and you hit okay and you go back to that single view. Are there any questions about that? Um, there aren't questions about this, but yes, there's uh, a few, a couple questions ar around the clipboard, and okay. there are. Um, Betty would like to go back to the global search results window. Okay, right here. You just uh, click yes. on it over here on the left side. Yes, right and here. just explain, um, I guess, the layout and what exactly we're looking at. Okay, sure. Here and what what the utility is of this okay. window. And then um, there is a question. So that's one question. Then there's a question about when would you use the search field when in a rep chapter? Okay. All right. So if you could show that. And then there are still a couple of questions on the clipboard on, okay. on actions on the clipboard. Okay. So first, um, I'm in global search. And again, you can always tell where you are in SHS by looking over here on the left side. This is the search, we're in search module. Um, when you have typed a, a search term, some search terms up here in the global search window at the top, and you activate that by hitting the return key or coming over here and clicking on this icon, um, you, you, get, you get your result here in global search. You can see that the tab here reflects the words that are in the window. So here's your search result um, in this first tab. And it comes in in two places, your repertory result here and 
your reference library. If I click on the reference library tab and light that up, now we're looking at the reference library result because see, it says up here at the top, search in repertories and reference libraries. If you're somebody who doesn't really want to have a reference library result, you're only looking for rubrics, you can always untick that and you only have one, uh, you only have this repertory tab then come up. But I have them both ticked. I like to have the choice of going and looking in my all my books for my result, which we didn't do for this case, by the way, but we could have. And so um, again, we found the rubric, but if I had wanted to, I could have popped over here to the reference library tab and I could have taken this to the clipboard by coming over here and clicking on this little clipboard with a plus sign here. Uh, that would take this query, which includes 94 remedies from 240 references. That's gonna take it to my clipboard. You see it got added. Okay, uh, and I'll see what that looks like on the clipboard. You see, it looks like this, Ref RL-S, it's always gonna look like that. Uh, thirst and, and those are the 94 remedies from your Materia Medica on that search. Let's go back to global search. Um, now each of these lines represents one of the 240 references here. And you, you can see the remedies are listed on the left in alphabetical order with their section and their book that they came from. And if you're wondering, oh, what book is that? Uh, you could just double click a line and go, and if you, okay, let me, let me back up a minute. If you are wondering about a certain line, you can single click it, um, okay? And it gives you a tiny little blurb. Uh, if you double click a line here, you're taken to that reference in your reference library, which, which is where you are now. And you can see now, it, okay, that book abbreviation is shares, um, the shares book here. All right, um, let's go back to global search. You, again, you can just pop around uh, right back to where you were. And uh, if you're looking for a particular remedy, you can certainly scroll for it here. But let's say uh, you want to pop down to phosphorus and see what they have here in Materia Medica. I have this little arrow uh, under the remedy. You can make it go under section if you want to search for a section. You can make it go under books if you want to search for a book, but I'm going to go search for phosphorus. So I have it under remedy. And now in that little type of search window above those choices, I'm going to put phosphorus in. And now I can see the references that, you know, this is what, this is why phosphorus came up here um, from these two references. And to clear it, you just X out of the type of search window. Um, Okay, that's that's good. I think I explained that pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. that's that's okay. good. Um, Let's go back to the so, clipboard. Um, we have so if you could quickly just go back and um, one of the attendees oh, had to just those. go away and couldn't see the side by side. So if you could just show oh, sure. um, where that is um, in the reference library. Okay, um, it's here. I'm going to take out shares, which is what we. We had these two tabs, phosphorus and antimonium tartaricum, from the that we had, you know, from the clipboard. Uh, these are two remedies that came up to the top. To put them side by side, you come over here to this icon, um, and the one that's up top is antimonium. So you don't need to tick that one. I want to bring phosphorus to the top as well, and hit OK. And now you're going to see them side by side. Okay, and then, um, okay, she says she got it. That's great. And I'm going to pop back into that. the rep chapter. Yeah, um, let's go back and I'll show you the type to search window. And the type to search, exactly. And then I'd like to go back to, to the clipboard and there's uh, some, some okay. questions there. Okay, all right. And so let's go into the um, stomach chapter. Um, See, the, I, I have a hard time finding uh, the chapters from the picture icons. That's why I kind of come over here and just do this. <laughs> it's just my own weirdness, I guess. Now, let's say that, um, you know, we're wondering about the thirst diminished uh, concept. 
and I could just put up here, um, you yeah, know, you could put the word thirst or dim diminished. I, I'm gonna put the word diminished and just see what comes up, diminished. Uh, just I'm curious. And so this came up, all right. You know, so this is how you use that. If you're looking for a specific word in a chapter, uh, that's when you do it. Let's also put the word thirst in here. And then you just scroll to, you know, to kind of see what your result is. But it gives you every instance of that word in that chapter. And so that's how, that's how this type of search window works. Is that clear? Okay. I'm at, I I, I'm not, I'm not hearing anything okay. from the person. So I, I assume. Okay. All right. So now we're back in the clipboard and what yeah. questions do we have here? Okay. So the, the two questions here on the clipboard are, um, how can I copy all the rubrics from one clipboard to another one? Okay. Um, this, uh, attendee, can can do one rubric at a time, but they're wondering if uh, okay. they can do all of them yes, simultaneously, can. like one in one. Sure. And the other question is about combining different rubrics, mm -hmm. and then if you have some combined rubrics, but then want to change them around or mm -hmm. cancel them, like delete them, mm -hmm. or take one rubric out of a combined rubric of three or four, mm -hmm. for example. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's do the um, copying first. So again, remember, you have to make sure you're clicked in. Uh, I, I want to be clicked into the clipboard side, not the graph side, not anywhere else. I'm just going to position my mouse down here at the bottom below the rubrics. Make, just do a little click. Lucy, just a qualification. Sorry. Um, Stelianos is asking, it's not just about copying the rubrics from uh, one clipboard to another, but would it is it possible to show how you would take the rubrics from a clipboard in one session of a patient chart and then copy them to a clipboard in another session of okay. a patient chart? It would work the same way. Yeah. You would simply open the chart, get to the clipboard where you wanted to copy and, and follow the steps that I'm about to show. It would be as simple as that. You open the old clipboard uh, and you do this, what I'm about to do. And then you copy it to a new clipboard, then you resave it to that patient's chart. You save that new clipboard. So let's show you this. All right, I'm clicked into the clipboard. I'm gonna hit Command A because I'm on a Mac. You can see they all highlight. There we go. Okay, all right. So uh, Command A or Control A selects them all. Command C or Control C copies them all. Then you have the um, uh, clipboard manager, which is the icon right above the clipboards. I'm gonna, click on that to open a new clipboard, all right? There we go. I'm gonna open the new clipboard. I'm gonna click into the blank clipboard there and I'm gonna hit command V for pasting. Um, control V if you're on a Windows computer. All right, and there they are, they're populating. That is how you do that. And so if you did have a patient in um you know that you had an old clipboard and you wanted to recopy that's exactly how you would do it um and now uh combining so i can close this clipboard that's identical if i wanted to delete the identical clipboard i could um, come over here hover my mouse on it control click to get the uh, menu options and delete yes i want to delete they give you the message all right so now we're back to this original and if I wanted to combine some, let's say that I wanted to combine um, the, the painful and the dry painful, I would select those. You hold down your command key to select multiple rubrics. Um, it, it's the control key if you're on Windows. And this icon, make group, you could come up here and click that. There's also a keyboard command. You could just click on the plus, you know, that keyboard, that key that's the plus equals. That's a keyboard command to get this, re, this naming group window up. And I'm just gonna put um, painful. Yeah, you name it, whatever you need to. Okay. 
All right, and so you can see how it put the two rubrics under the, the, you know, the rubric that I just created to combine those. And on the graph side, it shows up with just the combined rubric name. Um, now let's say that, um, you know, we wanted to, I'm just trying to think how I could change this. Well, anytime you wanna change, um, actually I'll go grab, I'll go grab another, painful rubric because I want this to feel real. So I'm just going to come over here to cough. And again, you see how easily I popped over to repertory module. Uh, I'm going to put in pain and I'm just going to, um, going to, you know, we're going to add, uh, we're, uh, I'm just going to add something so that I can show you on the clipboard. All right. And so let's say I wanted to add this, um, this rubric to this combined rubric you would um, highlight this new one. Oops, highlight it. And hold down the command key to highlight this, all right? And I'm gonna plus sign again. I'm gonna rename, painful. You can name it something new, you can name it the same, doesn't matter, all right? And so now all three are in there, all right? So that's how you do that. If you ever wanna ungroup, um, hover your mouse on the combined rubric name, right click and ungroup. Okay, so that's how you ungroup. Were there any more questions on that? No, I think that was very clear. And that was the question. Magda, if you can just uh, type in chat if that answered your query, then um, Okay, um, Heather is asking, can you explain the different colors and their significance? You mean I know it has to do one? with how strong the symptom is, but can you confirm that black is the strongest um, and how does this play into choosing a remedy? Okay. Is there a strategy to weighting things? Well, certainly, um, certainly. And you can see over here on the graph side that all the remedies are graded. These grades come from the repertories themselves. Uh, but you can do your own grading of rubrics on the clipboard side. If you're thinking that, um, you know, let's say that the, the painful dry cough is the one that you really want weighted the strongest, if you hover your mouse on that combined rubric that we just created, control click to get your option menu, and then you can. Uh, Okay, then you can come over here to, I thought it would say, um, you can come over here and grade, grade your rubric. Let's say you wanna give it a grade three. All right, and so that popped it up to the top because the rubrics are organized by grade and you can see it's underlined three times. And so that will, that will give more weight to that particular rubric. Um, and you can see it changed around your graph just a bit. Um, and so you can see here in the graph that I do have the number graph turned on. Um, some people prefer not to see numbers, they just want their colors. But if you are wondering what the colors mean, you can always switch to the number graph. And yes, the four is the, are the remedies that have the strongest, the, the highest grade and on down. Um, I hope that explained it. Yep. Um, so there's a couple of questions. Um, Magda is asking, Magda had asked the question about grouping rubrics and then uh, combining them and how to take things out. She's asking, what if she has a combined rubric with um, three or more rubrics in it and she only wants to ungroup one out of that? Okay. Right, so like um, in painful dry, mm -hmm. we have three rubrics. If she didn't want to ungroup the whole rubric uh, and she only wanted to like deselect one out of them, like take out mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. then I would just say, uh, Magda, you can just select the one that you want to ungroup and just pull it out, like drag it out. That's the way that I do it. Okay. And so and you still leave everything intact. You just pull that one rubric you don't want in that group rubric out and it just comes out. You see, now there's only two of those. And the mm -hmm. one that you pulled out is its it's own rubric. at the bottom. Yeah. So you just highlight it, click hold and drag it out of the yeah. group. Okay. 
Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, um, Peggy is asking, uh, she turned the cross references on, but she doesn't see them turned on in every repertory. So could you show, yeah, could you show the local uh, view options versus the global view yeah. options? So when you want to make um, your view permanent, you need to be in this uh, picture icon uh, page. You know, you're not in a chapter. You haven't selected a chapter yet. You're on the main page. Um, and then you use this eye. And if you, if you choose cross references here, they're going to show up in every chapter of every repertory, okay? But if you don't want them turned on all the time, you don't turn them on here. You only turn them on in a chapter. So you would come here, open a chapter, then go to the, uh, ignore the second eye. <laughs> this yeah, is a, this is the- <laughs> Yeah, I told them we were on beta versions. Yeah, so, we're on beta versions. Yes, so, yes. so don't just ignore, ignore the that. other eye, yeah. Um, you turn on the cross references within the chapter and then hit okay. But this is temporary. This is temporary. The minute you X out of this chapter, it's gonna be gone. You can go back into the mind chapter again and it's gone, okay? It's temporary. When you turn this on within a chapter, you have to turn it on on the main page. Now, there's a keyboard shortcut that I wanna tell you about. Uh, if you're wanting to see your cross references within a chapter, turn, do command U, command U, and that turns them on, okay? Um, and then they're gone again when you get out of that chapter. If you're wondering about keyboard shortcuts, come up here to help, keyboard shortcuts, and they're all listed here. It, they're, they're very convenient, I think. I like them. Yeah. All Great. right. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So, um, Are we ready? a quick question back on uh, the clipboard, sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Indranil is asking, how do we add numbers on the color boxes in the rep chart? Okay, come up here to this and you select number graph. You're probably on one graph, right? right? You need to come up here and you need to select mm -hmm. number graph. Right. If you don't remember which colors, so the colors are customizable too. I think somebody had also asked about, mm -hmm. you know, black is the darkest. Yeah, you, you can, can know, customize. Right. You can choose the colors that you want on your graph mm -hmm. to represent the different grades. Yeah, you just do that up in user preferences. Yeah. Um, which I, I'm happy to go through if somebody really wants. Well, to. there's a couple of other questions, okay. so um, let's do those first. Um, how do we include the traditional miasms under total rubrics, kingdom, et cetera, in the clipboard here? Okay. How do you get this, this line here? Yeah, how do you get that line? User preferences, clipboard settings, and select your miasm. I have traditional turned on. If you don't want to see that line at all, you hide. Uh, but I'm wanting to show it. You can also choose between three other choices. If you want Rajan's miasms, Bentley's miasms, or Bjorndal's miasms, you choose. Uh, and then once you've made your choices, you know, you save and your program reloads. So don't do it in the middle of a, I mean, it'll, the program will ask you, hey, do you want to uh, bring your clipboard back in? But you know, it's probably best if you make these kind of changes when you're not in the middle of a case. So that's how you do that. You can change this here as well. So let's say you typically like to see traditional miasms, um, but for but right now you wanna go and see a different kind. You come over here to filter miasm. And if you want to go see Rajan's uh, miasms, that's, um, you know, you could just choose one or two maybe. Maybe, maybe you're thinking that your case has, uh, is needing you know, either a ringworm or um, psychotic, and you're just wondering, um, apply. And now you're seeing uh, that line instead because you've placed the filter and you can see at the status bar what the green and the blue means. The blue is ringworm, um, 
the green is psychotic. Uh, and so this gives you a, a whole different take on the miasmic picture, you know, based on what you want to see. So you just turn off that filter by coming up here and clicking on the purple circle. Okay. So hopefully that answered that. Mm -hmm. um, so there are two questions. Um, one is around patient management. And then Lori is asking if we could just uh, go from the graph to how we um, can access the Materia Medica on certain remedies and then comparing remedies. Basically, that whole step that you showed earlier, if we could just Show read that again. That. Sure. Yeah. So it's a right click function. Um, let's say we've explored phosphorus, antimonium, tartaricum, and now we're interested in exploring Nexvomica. I'm going to hover on that name. Uh, it's a control click, a right click. Uh, go, go view that in the reference library. Choose that menu option. And again, it's a regular click to make your menu choice, a right click to get the menu, a regular click to make the menu choice. And now <clears throat> we are in a reference library looking at Nexvomica. So, um, you know, I covered this pretty heavily earlier. So maybe when I get the video up, take a look at the earlier part. Okay. Should we go to patient management? Um, yes, the question on patient management is that once um, the user has updated or saved uh, a new session, uh -huh. they find it hard to remove the box, the, the patient management okay. window or that chart. Okay. All right. Well, let's take it step by step. Real, um, I haven't created a chart for this uh, person yet. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create a patient. Select that. And we'll just throw a name in here. Mary Brown. Okay. Um, and you can fill in any information you want. Uh, contact information, session information. This can change if you took it yesterday, you can change it to yesterday's date, et cetera. Any of this information you can put in. Um, let's say we decided on phosphorus. And so you can put that in. We're gonna put phosphorus 200, 200 C, okay? Uh, now let's save it. You just hit save. You can hit save here or save here, either place. This window always comes up. You must verify which clipboard you want to go in this chart. So be aware. If you have a lot of clipboards over there on the left, be very aware uh, which is which. Uh, and there, you, can re you can rename your clipboards if that would help you keep up with them if you do have a lot on the left. And that's a right click on the clipboard um, and you can rename it. And then when you hover your mouse on that name, uh, it, it tells you. But anyway, choose the right clipboard here hit save. All right, and so you see that this consultation line appeared, it has today's date, it has the remedy that we put in. Um, now let's say that, you know, we wanted to make a change. We're like, oh, wait, I want, there was a rubric I wanted to take out of that. So let's, um, you know, let's go and we'll take out, take out a rubric. Let's say we wanted to take, I don't know. We're going to take out this, this material medical. It doesn't matter. Whatever rubric you want to take out, I opened up the clipboard and I removed it by highlighting it, delete on my keyboard. And now I'm going to update. I'm going to go back into patient management. You see over here on the left on the icons palette. If I click on the chart, go straight back to patient management. Now I have a choice. Uh, I can update or I can save as new. I want, I don't want to save as new. I want this uh, change I made on the clipboard to go on this session line. So I'm just going to update it. Update. Yes, I'm going to update that same clipboard. If I had hit save as new, a second session line would have appeared. So I didn't want to do that for this in this instance. There are there are some instances where you would want to save as new. Maybe you've come, somebody's follow-up, it's a different day, and you do want a second session line. That's when you would um, maybe save as new um, <clears throat> if you've opened an old clipboard and you've changed it. Um, and so just to, to X out of this, 
you you just uh, I don't know where you want to go otherwise, but you could you don't have to x you can x out. Let's say you you're ready to close your chart. Um, you know you can just x out of this whole window. Boom. Now the clipboard's gone. You've closed the chart. You'll see over here, nothing there. Mary is gone. Um, you can very easily open her again, viewing her, choosing her, opening her. Um, there she is. Uh, where's the clipboard? You have to choose the session line. Now this is a brand new chart. It only has one. I'm gonna choose that one session line. There's my clipboard. All right, so you can just, yeah. Uh, if you're ready to close a chart, just X out of patient management. Uh, or you can just come over here to, to the icons palette and pop around wherever you want to be. I hope that answered that question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I think maybe Christine, who asked that question, had um, a couple of different windows open and she was using, she was Xing out another window instead of the patient management window because okay. the two Xs were very close together. Okay. Uh, I also want to point out that if you're still working on the patient, uh, even though you have updated the chart, um, you can always use the minus sign next to the X to minimize the window, and it will mm -hmm. just put it at the bottom of your um, right. program, and you can, you know, click on it to act, pull it back up again. Yes. Any of uh, these windows can be minimized. You see the yes. X and the minus? Any, right. Anywhere, um, any of them can be minimized if, yeah. you, if you want to work that way. And as Lucy said, you know, you can just, you don't have to close any window. You can just switch from that control bar on the left to mm -hmm. any other uh, module in the program. Mm -hmm. But just know then that that window is open in the background. It's one of the windows that's still open. Uh, or you can minimize the windows and they go to little tiles at the bottom of your program. So, and you can always like pull them back up or yeah, right there. Like See, they'll go to the bottom of your program. Mm -hmm. And you just click on it to bring it back up. All right. Any more questions? We're, um, we've got five more minutes. No, no. Actually, let's see. Uh, we have answered all the questions. Everybody was very active today. So that's great. We had lots of good questions. Okay. Um, and there is one last question. Can we view this session as a recording to practice some of the commands that you uh, demonstrated today? Absolutely. This has been recorded and it will go up on our YouTube channel, um, you know, within the next few days. So look for it there. Rupali, if you if you have that YouTube link, um, you can throw it in chat. Oh, yes. Thanks, Carol. Um, one last quick question. Um, how to print the chart? OK, um, so the, 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 not the chart. Sorry, the patient graph and the clipboard. How do you print that? OK, so I'll open up Mary again. Um, so open up your clipboard and do you see this icon over here? It says download graph image. <clears throat> so if you, you, you can, you create a PDF, um, and then you can print that out. So that, that's one way. Um, you can also over here in patient management, um, do you see these icons? download the session image, print the session. Um, Rupali, I don't have, I, I don't have a printer actually. Do you print? Yeah. Am I, uh, do you want to explain the printing a little bit more in depth? Cause I'm just showing the uh, icon to people. Sure. With my, no, remember that one corrupted case that's right, really right. Um, messing up my entire, it's, it takes a while to oh, actually, yeah, right. oh, there they are. Though. So. You, yeah. Yeah. They're all there. It just feels in the beginning, you get a little clutch in your heart because you feel like mm -hmm. it's not there, but um, they're all there. You see the other option is here. There's a print button here. And if you click on that, it will say print all sessions. All sessions. So yeah. we'll print all three of my sessions, but then you could select a session and you can print just that one session. Mm -hmm. And you can see, I don't really have anything uh, in terms of notes or comments or diagnoses or stuff like that. So there really isn't anything to print here. And what we'll just print is um, the, the, the clipboards and the graphs. 
see then i guess print now ah here you and go. then it will bring up your printer settings and then you can choose so it will pull up the printer from you know from my wi-fi because it's connected or if you have a wired connection it will pull it up and then you can choose your print settings and uh hit print and then it will print you can also print a pdf um if you want that um and that's another option here so it just pulls up it should print up uh, pull up your printer settings perfect uh carol says she only wants to print the chart in which case you just go to your clipboard um and and here um you can download the graph uh image so let me show you Do you see here, did you see that little green? Um, it said file saved successfully on the desktop. So, okay. So you've got some options there. Yeah. Um, Carol's asking, why can't you do control P? Um, that's a good question. I haven't tried that. Uh, that's not something that comes um, automatically to my mind, but possibly that would work as well. And then uh, the other thing where, um, somebody has asked a user has asked is also that if you were just to if you were to you see here when you just say when you just hover in the graph this print uh command comes up so you could just click on that i think and it would make it print the other thing is to copy and paste and a user has suggested that if you hover in here and try to just you know pull it uh as if you were uh, selecting that area, it should pop up as an option to copy and paste onto another document. Um, so that I think we're working on. Uh, the one other question was quickly is, can you copy the rubrics and paste them into a Word document? And yes, you can do that. Um, so you could just, you know, I just um, held down my shift key, selected the last rubric, do a command C, you see it says at the bottom rubric copied in green. And then I could go here and open a new window. Can I you guys see I these other windows? No, I think we're only looking at your SHS, but if oh, you're sorry. Okay. That's okay. If you That's open the Word document, here. then you just there. paste. Oh, there you go. Now we can see. Okay. So I just uh, opened a new blank Word document and I'm just, hopefully it remembers the command uh, C from before. So I'm just gonna do a command V. And there you go. And there you go. It copied all the rubrics. The one thing it does do, and I've noticed this personally in my cases as well, is if you have combined rubrics, they tend to ungroup uh, when you paste. So it does not, and I don't remember if it used to do that in MacRep or not. Um, but if you, so you can see that I have a uh, combined rubric here, addicted, absorbed, absent-minded, and um, it it combined it it ungrouped that when it pasted it into the Word document. Okay, so. Can you print two graphs on one page? The font is very large, so I just make screenshots, put them together. And yes, that's what I would do, Lindsay. It's a little uh, more cumbersome. There's a few more clicks, but if you want to be more efficient and yeah, yeah, then because this will print, if you just print, it will print as a, a, a PDF and you can't really manipulate that. But if you do screenshots and then copy and paste them into a Word document, you can paste as many graphs as you want mm -hmm. um can you copy these rubrics from a word document and paste into a clipboard yes uh i don't usually do that and i don't know if it ends up uh working consistently every time but we can try so here i'm copying command c and then i'm going to go in here and i'm going to close some of these cases and I'm just going to open a new clipboard here and let's see 
Okay. I'm sure you picked them all up, but. So I think that it, no, the grouped rubric that ungrouped when I pasted it into Word, it didn't group back and it didn't paste. So the individual rubrics that are pulled into the clipboard and then on a Word document and then pasted back into a new clipboard, those will work. But if you combine rubrics on a clipboard, then you paste them into Word, it will ungroup, but it will still paste. But if you copy those and try and paste them back into a clipboard, it won't work. Um, there's something about the grouping and the ungrouping that makes the copy paste not work right. But the individual rubrics do paste back and, um, you know, turn into a graph. Okay. Okay. So that was all the questions. Uh, Lucy, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. And it was a you have, you have a very active question. session. Yeah, um, you're welcome. I, I just want to quickly mention, um, I just want to quickly mention to everyone that um, in case you were thinking of coming to uh, the Joint American Homeopathic Conference in San Antonio um, this spring, um, I will be running a case workshop um, three hours, and we're um, asking participants who would want to attend to send in their cases, and um, we'll do them live um, at the case workshop. So if anybody uh, is in the U.S. and was thinking of attending, that might be an added inducement to come and um, be there in person with me. And Lucy will be attending her daughter's wedding and can't be there. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, but I will be there and we'll have a good time. So um, just wanted to throw that out there. And thank you all for coming and all the wonderful questions. Lucy, any last words? Oh, just that look for a mailing about this cases workshop that will be coming out soon. So you'll have details. And it's worth it to come a day early, I think, to attend this workshop. Yes, so. yes. And we can all go for dinner afterwards and a drink and talk about um, synergy or not. The software will we'll just get to know each other. It would be great if, if to see some of you there in person. Absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry to miss it. But thank you all so much for coming. Thank and you. Bye. See you next time. Bye.